The Sovel SV01 Pro. It's a weird printer. Let me explain why. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. My name is Frank, and today I want to talk about the Solval SV01 Pro. This is an oddball of a printer, but not for any bad reasons. Typically, when you start looking for 3D printers, you're going to find the usually the small printers like the Ender 3s or the uh, Elegoo Neptune 3s. They're typically 220 by 220 by 250 build plate. So kind of small. You can print some stuff on it, but you're not going to be able to print anything like a full-size helmet. Usually, you'll start seeing printers around a 300 by 300 millimeter build volume. It's a much larger printer, a bigger footprint, and you can do much larger pieces on it. Well, the Sovel SV01 Pro, it's kind of in between that. When you first set it up and get it on the table, it feels like a smaller printer. It feels like those Ender 3s or Elegoos or the, the tiny printers. But then you start to actually drop models into your slicing program and start printing with it, and you realize it can do some pretty big pieces. Sitting at about $300, depending where you're looking at, as of filming this video, it's $289 on Solvel's website. They run sales all of the time, and I'm sure you might be able to find it around that price even now. The build volume is 280 by 240 by 300. Again, not quite as big as that 300 cubed, but still big enough to do well, large prints. Aside from being just Creality parts with a different name on top of them, um, they build their printers to just have what you need. What I mean by that is there are a lot of 3D printer companies that are throwing new technology at their printers, maybe not testing it sometimes, or maybe adding features that, you know, didn't need to be there. The same thing Sovel did on their SV03, they did on this SV01 Pro, and it really just has all those features that people are clamoring after and want, and it doesn't have any of the bells and whistles you don't need. So let's talk about this printer. What kind of features does it come with that make it pretty good? First off, it's easy to assemble. Uh, all printers nowadays, or I think like 99% of them, aren't really DIY kits anymore, even though they're gonna be called that. This printer comes, I wanna say like 99% assembled. You stand up the gantry, you bolt a few things in, like four bolts on the side, you plug some stuff in, run some wires, attach the uh, filament, uh, the spool holder and filament runout sensor. It's very easy to assemble, maybe 10 to 20 minutes if you've never done this before. So the printer's set up, now you need to get the bed level or trammed. It has a CR touch or whatever, you know, Sovel's calling it. It's an auto bed leveling system to help you pinpoint and level the bed properly. Really easy to use. On top of that, it has a pretty nice magnetic build surface. Once this is heated up and to temperature, these build uh, plates are actually pretty sticky and can help get that first layer nice and smooth very easily. And then when the print's done, you just take it off, flex it, pop it off, and you know, you can put it back on and go to printing right away. Now, because it's not as small as something like an Ender 3, it comes with a dual Z lead access. This way, this way as your gantry goes up and down, it's not gonna get out of sync or wobble. It's gonna help support the printer for taller prints. It also comes with belt tensioners. It has an X and a Y belt tensioner to make sure the belts are nice and tight. And as the printer gets a couple, you know, miles on it, the belts are gonna start to stretch out over time. That's normal. This way you can keep them tight and tensioned. And I think the coolest thing for this price point is that it's a direct drive system. This means right out of box, you can start printing softer materials like TPUs and flexible PLAs without really much issue at all. And then it comes with the standard filament runout sensor, print power resume, loss recovery, and the user interface is pretty easy to use too, but we'll get to that in a second. And it's silent. I think that is a standard that just needs to be on 3D printers nowadays. Like it's a quiet printer. Even the really small Tronxy Crux 1 I just tested was a silent printer and that thing's like 140 bucks. So you don't gotta worry about this thing sitting in the next room and making tons of noise throughout the house. It's pretty quiet. When you first boot up the printer, you're gonna be met with a fairly simple to use user interface. And actually right at the top here, I only just recently learned this, it has a day and night mode. So if you want the screen really bright for the day or you can turn it to night mode, that's a feature I've never seen on any other printer and kind of nice actually, it won't make the room all bright, but it's gonna give you your nozzle temperature, your bed temperature, and you can click on either of them and immediately start preheating. So we can go right to PLA, we can go to ABS, we can change whatever we want on the printer. So we'll do 215 and we'll run this at 65. That's my standard settings for this. And you can turn off your fans, you can immediately set it back to cooling, which is all great. And then you're also met with the leveling system. 
The leveling system is going to give you a couple options. You can do an auxiliary level where you can use a sticky note, you can let it run its auto leveling, you can even do a z-axis compensation which is great for getting down a good first layer. Tons of settings to go into for refilling the filament, changing advanced settings, like your temperature, velocity, acceleration, jerk, it gives you a lot of options even on a touchscreen system. And you can do all the standard stuff like move the axis, disable the steppers and change everything like that. And then when it's time to go into print, you just select your file, scroll through and hit print. So let's talk about some of the prints that I was getting right out of box. I ran just the very standard Benchy and some silk white filament and it came out pretty good. The bottom got a little janky just from trying to dial in my first layer, but overall not a bad Benchy at all. The top came out really nice. And then I had just a little bit of lifting on this calibration cube, but this was actually the first print, and then I threw a Benchy at it. From there, I threw everyone's favorite Flexi Dragon at it, and you can see where I ran out of the white silk. It paused, let me do a print resume with a filament swap, and that pause and resume feature worked flawlessly. I, don't, I didn't have any type of layer shift at all, and on a print in place like this, it's actually pretty impressive. Uh, this came out great, and I love, I love this filament. Look at it. Then I threw a couple more Flexi Dragons at it. I had more, but I gave a couple away. But you can see that it was printing fairly nicely. And God, I just, like, look at that. Look at that color shift. Wow. As for the details on the prints go, it handled all of these spikes really, really nicely. And again, an out of box printer being able to do this, this is what you need to expect nowadays. This is just, this is good quality. But let's talk about the size of the prints this thing can do. This is a Red Hood helmet by DO3D, and all of the files I showed you guys, I will link them down below. The modelers deserve credit too. They did a good job on these things. Um, the fact that I can print a full-size helmet on this printer is awesome. This is Sunlu PLA Plus in red, and I mean, like, look at that. This is no tweaking or dialing. This is no temperature towers or, you know, this is a factory profile using the Sovol uh, slicing program, which is basically just Cura, just with a Sovol name tr uh, thrown at it. But like the quality on this, it got pretty tall. I did have the inside of this one supported just a little bit. So it did help with that wobble, but this is this is beautiful. I, I'm very happy with this print. So happy, in fact, I actually went and started printing even more Red Hood helmets. I have five more of these helmets downstairs that I'm getting ready to ship out to customers, but it just kept printing them. You can see here how it was handling black PLA and pretty much just like the red. There are very, very small imperfections, but nothing to really write home about. This is, this came out great. Look, just look at the front of that. Wow. A good middle of the road price tag, a large build volume, easy to set up, quiet, and pretty good print quality right out of the box. I don't have much bad stuff to say about this printer. I actually really can't think of anything I don't like about it. If you were looking for a larger printer or a larger build volume for whatever reason, but you didn't want to jump into the uh, you know upper 300s, 400, 500 dollar price range, Solvo made a pretty good option. Like I said at the beginning of the video, they just take a lot of the features that work on a lot of the Creality printers because like I said, this is just, it's all Creality parts. Even the little CR touch on the side says Creality across it and they just throw it together to a printer just to get it onto the market, and it works. If you could save up a little bit more, yeah, there are a couple printers I'd recommend for a higher price point, or if you're looking for something a little smaller, there's those options too. But if you have about that $300 budget and you're looking to get into the hobby, you really won't be disappointed with this printer at all. A lot of printers nowadays are just kind of good. They don't need to be anything particularly flashy or exciting, and a lot of them are just clones of other printers. But if you ended up with the Sovol SV01 Pro, don't be sad that you didn't end up with the Ender 3 Max or the Neptune 4, 5, or 8. It doesn't matter. It's still going to get the job done. You just went with a Ford when your buddy went with a Chevy. I think the 3D printing community is doing a better job of recent of holding printer companies to a higher standard. We're expecting those silent boards. We're expecting it to be easy to build. We're expecting it to level itself at this point. And yeah, a lot of companies are delivering on that and I like it. All in all, I got the printer, set it up, leveled it, and it started pumping out prints. There's not much more I could really ask for in that aspect. So with that, it's pretty much going to wrap up this video, guys. If you have any comments, questions, and concerns about anything you saw, please drop a comment down below. I read them all, and I'll do my best to respond to as many as I can. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. I have tons of more videos coming out, and I would love to be able to share them with you guys. So make sure you ring that notification bell. It's a free way to support the channel and support everything I do here. And thank you again, Sobel, for sending me another 3D printer to do an unbiased review about. I love being able to test these things. But that's gonna be a wrap for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching, and you have a good day.